Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today we are going to be painting mayonnaise lilacs in a glass face. It's a really fun painting. Believe it or not, it's more beginner friendly than you think. I'm going to break this whole thing down step by step so you can paint along at home no matter where you're at in your painting journey. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He is going to make sure that as I am teaching the techniques and demonstrating the materials and tools, you can really see what's going on. We have many robotic cameras. They really zoom in. The other thing that we will be doing is breaking this down into steps. Steps are really nice because you can find your spot. Again, on the video later, we timestamp them so you can like scrub through easily. Those also match a step-by-step -step written out set of instructions that we produce seven to 14 days, sometimes 21 days, depending on how many videos we put out later of written instructions. So if you're finding this video past the live and you're like, it's next year, look for that, what we call a mini book. You'll be able to find those on the website. They're incredibly useful. We haven't always done them, um, but we have a lot of help now. So we're able to do them. And that makes a huge difference, I think, in your guys really being able to level up your painting and kind of, you know, Get beyond just I'm um, relaxing, but also I'm relaxed and I'm happy with my lilacs. Relaxed with my lilacs. Yeah. Relaxed with lilacs. I love that. So, yeah, uh, as some of you know, we had a little bit of a weather warning going on here. It was a mild one. It wasn't the get shelter now, idiots, when it was sort of like, oh, no, there it goes. There goes more. There's more warning. More warning. It's not going to stop busying at me. I'm not going to turn them off just in case we have to end the show and I've got a skadoot. Well, I mean, we're here. It's we're here. I'm literally in the... I'm going to tell you something about Texas houses. They are not designed for this kind of weather. <laughs> when they're like, get to this room. We're like, yeah, this house doesn't have that room. I got maybe a closet, mm. a coat closet. <laughs> That's what I got. All right. But we're in a pretty safe sheltered area, so we're okay. All righty. John, that was a weird intro. Those of you who come uh, after the live, wasn't that a weird intro? <laughs> it was. It's so strange. But we're really good at what we do. And here's the thing. I can get you through this painting. I can help you create this. Now, there is a traceable. It's on the website. But, hey, if you don't want to draw, if you, if you, if you want to draw, I'm going to show you how to do that with me. You can just follow along. If you want to use a traceable, it's also okay. Let's throw up. Oh, let's go over the materials just real quick. Just to make sure you guys know what we're using. Okay. I have a 9 by 12 stretched canvas right here um, this is just a nice size and it fits well on my painting area and the nice thing about painting in these sizes is that it doesn't take up so much room in your house I also have ultramarine blue paint quinacridone magenta cad yellow yellow oxide deoxazine purple burnt sienna thalo green thalo blue marsh black and titanium white so those are the paint colors that we're doing today not too bad not necessarily traditional paint colors, but some of them are. Some of them are not modern, very historically accurate. But what we're doing here is a reproduction. And a reproduction, um, since we are not trying to forge anything, which would be the crime, since we're just doing a reproduction, um, the most important thing is to sort of observe how the painting was constructed and that you learn about how paintings are built by looking at how Manet built his painting right. while doing it in your modern media. Shall we throw up a step? Some crazy like a step. Are you ready for step? Take a deep breath with me. <sighs> All right, stay with me. I can do this. I got this. And you really do. You have this. Now, I'm going to do a weird thing. I'm going to take my yellow ochre, and I'm going to just kind of go over my painting in this weird, funny little way. <laughs> and that's just because I don't want to mess up my nice, neat palette over here, and I just need a bit of a toned canvas. And that means I don't have to be that precious or specific. You don't have to do it this way. You could just very neatly and tidily using your yellow ochre over there or oxide, depending on which one you have, paint out the whole canvas. Just a nice place to start. Painting it all in. Now notice I'm not worried that it's streaky. That's really not my concern. What I'm trying to do is just get a coat of color on the surface as a ground, and it's going to do some things. It's going to make sure that my painting looks very finished, even if the surface shows through subsequent paint layers that I'm putting on. And it's going to make sure that all my paint sort of really sticks to the canvas beautifully. So I've got that fairly well spread out. 
Yay! That's yeah. not bad, right? Not at all. Okay, I'm going to rinse out this brush and put it aside. Now, remember with your brushes, it's really important to not leave acrylic paint in them. That shortens the life of your brushes. You want to rinse it out and then do a thorough brush spa washing at the end of your painting sessions where you get all that paint out of your brushes and let them dry flat. That's really going to help you keep those tools in great shape longer. I'm going to dry this, John, with the hair dryer, That's and then we'll come back and do the next step. Yeah, so just thoroughly dry that over between the, between these steps, especially here when you're, um, you know, uh, using the yellows. You really have to take a little bit extra time to make sure they thoroughly get dry. They can fool you and still be a little tacky, a little sticky, a little grippy, and um, that'll make your paint do all sorts of weird stuff. So just make sure you thoroughly dry it, um, and you'll, you may even see the sheen change from a, you know, super shiny to a more matte as it goes but uh, yeah just thoroughly dry it um, and uh, then we'll go on to the next step as she said if you're bored waiting here for this you could hit the subscribe button or the like button if you have not already hit that subscribe button you could hit the like button um, there are other buttons down there we don't you may not need to hit those as much just the thumbs up one that's the one it's a good one Yes, it takes a long time to paint to dry the yellow because it can be really sticky. So it's that tricky yellow paint. Is that is tr how is it tricky? Because it has takes sometimes it takes extra time to dry. It does feel like it holds paint. Uh, Byron asked a really good question about the use of easels. Um, so do I recommend it? That really depends on you as an artist. Um, it's really preferential. There are great artists that paint at easel. There are great artists that paint flat on the floor. There are great artists that paint at a tilted kind of uh, drafting table like I'm doing here. So what I'll say is if you paint flat, what's hard if you don't have a good position to see it is that sometimes you don't really see the perspective, which is why I tilt mine up and we finally figured out how to get the camera to do that. Cause before this, I was like on a rotating table, which was making everyone a little car sick. Um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, you got to make it work. The nice thing about an easel is that when you're standing, you have enough distance from the easel to like really see what you're doing. You just have to remember to, back up your brush with your hand to further back so that when you're painting you're not up close when i'm at the when i'm close like this i can use it in a pencil grip but when i'm at an easel i like to back my hand out and that's really about health physicality sustainability how long you can stand and paint um, versus you know how you feel when you sit and paint none of them are better than the other one they're just preferences that is an easel lecture. There you go. Yay! Oh, goodness gracious. Heather C., thank you so much. Sip the coffee. Sketch in. Now, this is the time when you would use your trans, your traceable and transfer the image on the canvas. Ooh, that, that was... was a, we had a flash of light there. Mm. We'll just have to see how this goes, won't we? Now, I'm going to see if my white chalk will show. It. It's going to show enough for me. I'm going to sketch in my Voss. So I'm going to come across about the middle space of my canvas and make a nice little mildly curved line. Bring two vertical lines down. Kind of round this bottom out. And what's great is, is that there are these little glass feeders, right, that kind of come out and round. And then there's a perspective glass feeder. And I think that's one of the things that I, fi I found most interesting about this particular painting was the rounded feet. I really liked them. I'm going to be real honest. I was like, oh, that's a really nice vase to put everything into. You know, and we know that our flowers kind of take up about this amount of space here. I'm going to be painting the background in, so I really don't need to have those in perfect because I'm going to want to paint my background in. What I'm really concerned about at this stage it's just getting my vase in where I like it. Now, what is this cool tool, you might ask? <clears throat> Did you ask it? You might have asked it to your head, to yourself. You might have shouted it at the TV. This is a Taylor's chalk tool. This particular one is by Dritz. That's the one I like. I have it in my Amazon store, um, so you can find it there. What I'll say is, is that 
these should not be expensive. And if for some reason companies are price gouging at the moment, just use chalk from a chalkboard. <laughs> That's my new thing that I'm all against is like price gouging. Don't love it. Okay, so when we have that in, that's all we've got to do for step two. Just get your glass in. That seems pretty reasonable. So we're ready pretty to yeah. you start, Put up another start step. painting them. Let's make sure I like it. I'm going to sketch it back in, though, in my next step. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're going to be doing the background in. And to do the background, I am going to use a scruffy hog bristle brush. This is a number 20 Raphael Artini brush. It is a bright, about an inch wide, and it has hog bristles in it. You can get synthetic hog bristles or natural hog bristles. If you get natural hog bristles, remember you have to wash the brush before you use it the first time or it will shed on your canvas. Shouldn't shed a lot, but it will shed. So, tips. <laughs> Now I'm going to get my brush a little bit damp and I'm going to take a little of my Doc's Purple and kind of work it into the bristles here and come over to my yellow ochre. How fun is that? Yeah. It's very rainy. Add a little purple. I might even get a little ultramarine blue into that there. Kind of gray it out. Look at this wonderful weird background color and i'm in a very scruffy way paint out this lovely background sometimes i'll get a little of my altering blue look how minorly how i come from the outside and i load just a hint that's how i'm controlling my paint I'm going to come around the sides just in case I want to frame. And this is a good dry brush. So even when I wet it, I kind of pull the extra water out. Getting that strange background color. I'm going to be a little darker up here through about the midway, and then when I come down towards the bottom, it will lighten up a good bit. Should be a purple gray color. And it's just fun, messy painting at this stage. Do you like fun, messy painting? I do. Fun, messy painting is just a good time. I'm really creating quite a gray here. That's what we're doing. Getting that sort of energy and that antiqueness going. A little blue over to the purple. It's a very rough, kind of multi-directional, sketchy feel. Fun to be messy. Yeah. Now, if you're new to painting, believe it or not, being messy sometimes feels a little stressful. <laughs> but we're really trying to create this nice little roughed background. How's everybody doing today? Are you feeling really all right? nice? Yeah. I'm over here peeking out the window. Making sure we don't got a skedaddle. <laughs> well, I'm not too worried. We won't, I, I have to assure you, we will not do anything dangerous or harmful or at risk. We're just aware of weather. Keep an eye out there. Let 
Maybe coming to the blue a little more coming down here. See, I'm just working that up over the yellow on the surface. And the nice thing about the yellow on the surface is that's also graying out the layer that we're putting on right here. So we're doing a little mix. We've got some ultramarine. We've got doxazine purple, titanium white, and a little cad yellow. Not cad yellow, a yellow oxide. Come here, and this might be a kind of cooler, deeper color over here. And I'll definitely paint into my feet because, you know, I want my background to feel like it's solid behind the object. So you will see that I'm really very carefully observing how multi-directional brush strokes can kind of hide my brush stroke in a way. Right. You can see I was much more into my blue mix down here. I go way more into the mix up here where it's the yellow with a little bit of the purple and kind of putties out. And I painted out my other little foot, but I don't mind that. And the reason that I don't is I know I can easily put it back and I more want to capture a line of shadow kind of coming off this way. Just listen to the sound of the brush on the canvas. Sort of enjoy your day. Yeah. Kind of background of the rain with it. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's actually, for me, I'm having a lovely ASMR day. <laughs> Because of my background noise. Coming up here with this. And you can see I'm much more into the yellow. And we can even bring a little bit up here. Up into the wall. Very much like doing this. Uh, back into my sort of little shaded color and you can see it came back with a little yellow and white and kind of yeah. diffuse that there, change that little line. So there is that def definitive line, but then you know we soften that out. I'm going to get back into my ultramarine blue, purple, and yellow ochre. And let's just kind of come back and really deepen that background. See how we're doing? And this is also helping us kind of soften it. So we're doing a dry brush kind of softening to the background. There's some lightning. Oh my goodness. That one was loud. Yeah. Did you hear that? It was so loud. <laughs> I think everybody heard it. That, uh, did everybody hear that one? Ooh. Exciting painting today. The energy.
And just play with this until you are fairly happy with your result. Sometimes I get a little more into my yellow ochre. See how I'm doing? And we just want a canvas that feels like it is definitely fully, totally painted, which I feel like we have gotten here. We've done that. So let's dry this completely. Now you can take as much time on this step as you like um, and really play with it, get familiar with your tools, uh, tune in your dry brushing. It's not like you're gonna have too many layers. It's uh, a really fun stage, so I highly suggest you enjoy it. Okay, let's mm. dry thoroughly. Yep. Yeah, just thoroughly dry it, and then we'll be able to get the that. I, yeah, this is a really lovely background. I uh oh, there's a little lightning there. It's a very lovely background. I like how they're uh, sort of that the sort of rainbow soft color field there behind it. I think it's uh, uh, really pretty. We could do an entire entire set of videos just on those pretty backgrounds. Um, and, you know, I think that we we have covered a lot of different backgrounds over the years, so I'm not sure if we have done anything specifically on just backgrounds, though. That'd be an interesting question. I'd have to do a search on that. Speaking of, if you go to our website, click on video, then on search, or a video, then you can do a search and find a bunch of videos. Find a bunch of videos. Of stuff. Did we ever do any videos just on backgrounds? You know, no, but would you guys like a series of videos just on backgrounds? They were just Different asking Different backgrounds that. you can do. Yeah. In art. <laughs> Not mind doing that at all. I'm taking a tool called a T-square ruler. And I'm just giving myself a little sort of guideline that's level. Sometimes these just help me. in my craftsmanship, you know? Just make sure I did a good job in them. I'll come here just a little above where my purple is. Kind of reset in. My sketch in here. And we're going to start painting in the background. Do we have a new step up? Yeah, I, th I think oh, I excellent. did. Excellent. Yeah, we're in step four. Careful of my little D brushes there. All right. I'm going to pick a brush. This is a number 12 Textura Synthetic Bright. Um, just means that the filaments are synthetic and it's about the width of a nail, a fingernail. The reason I tell you size relationships is if you don't have this exact brush, what brush do you have at home that's close to this? Like if you look at this and you go, well, it's about the width of a finger and, and it's got a square edge on it and synthetic and it's firm. What brush do you have? That way you don't have to run out and buy brushes every time you see me paint, right? Like understanding what's in your bucket that's sort of like what's in my bucket, that's an important part of painting. I'm gonna take a little bit of my black and my brown together. And I'm gonna come initially along this outer edge. And sort of begin to sketch in some of what I have happening here. You can see it's very sketchy. I'm using the edge of the brush for a crisp line. Getting our little vase in, our little 
this little fellow here is sort of peeking out. Now there's this wonderful sort of dark area of the glass down here that I am rather fond of. And you're like, fond of it? I'm like, yeah, I really like it. Mm -hmm. It makes me happy. I can come in right now and take a second to tidy up. See, I'm tidying up. Go back into the blue over here, just making sure that everything is sort of nice and through there. Isn't that great? It really is. Now I can come up at the top and maybe I'm going to take a little bit of white and bring that down. Okay. And this is, you play with this here till you're happy with it. So you're like, oh yeah, I really like how that is. And do I like its placement? Do I feel good about it? Do you I know, need to change anything? I'd, I would have to say that there's, we have a crew of people who think that this is awesome. We are Sherpa. <gasps> are we Sherpa today? We are Sherpa today. That's a big old joke we used to tell from 300 that probably has aged They're out. Probably just like, you know, people but are like, it, yeah. it's so, but that's what it means is there's 300 of us. Because it was like, you know. <laughs> we were there in like the early days of live on YouTube. And so like getting anyone to show up to live. <laughs> so, so, so every time we hit a new metric, we would like lose our minds. And we still kind of do. Now yeah, we're we like, just enjoy Sherpa. It. Just like, enjoy it. That's what that's about. If you're wondering. All right, let's get that in. Come back and we don't need to dry it, but let's call that a step. Okay, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how you're going to paint that in. No, don't even try. <laughs> I just want you guys to see this part of it. So you want to get that see. sort of sketched in there to that, to that degree. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of my green and brown together. Right, so my phthalo green and my burnt sienna. And let's smidge a bit of our cad yellow into that. And that's how we're going to get that sort of lovely antiquey little green and you can add white pretty easily or brown and come here to the side and kind of sketchily put some of that in maybe add a little more yellow over here A little bit up in the corner. Don't be afraid of adding white to it. I'm going to do a little spot right there. So we got a little green here, a little green there. On the corner of the brush, right, I can just kind of be a little sketchy. Maybe get a little brown into it. So add a little light green there. Maybe a little bit of light green there. And even kind of highlight a little of the light green there. And it's okay, I think I'm gonna pop just a bit of it down there in the, va in the base. And let's do a little of our burnt sienna and our Mars black again. Add a little bit of a back and forth kind of dark spot there. And kind of come across here. Just dry brushing and it's sort of a curved stroke coming across the mid part of the glass towards the bottom. A little bit there come over a bit and add another little dark spot. Now I'm going to make a diagonal line and then I'm going to come back and kind of pull it out like that. Then I'm going to lightly, so I'm lightly blending it. Yeah. We're just getting that in there. Just, a, just the beginnings of a thought. 
okay? Let's get that in. I want you to see that because we're going to piece this together like a puzzle. So we're going to call that a step. Okay. We're going to come back. We don't need to dry, but we're going to keep painting in the glass. Hmm? Step six. Woohoo! Can you eat my coffee when you get up? All right, I'm going to put in some more background color. So I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow into my dock's purple. Maybe gray it with a little more ultramarine. And then add a ton of white. Now we'll pass that to you. Whenever you're painting glass, what you're really painting is not the see-through part of the glass. You're painting all the parts that you can see. Right? And there's always parts that you can see in the glass. So I'm just roughing this in. And I might lightly kind of come over my dark line there. Go ahead and grab a little green to work back there. Little vertical mark. I'm sure that's fantastic. I can see the steam. And a little kind of diagonal line to sort of, you know, exaggerate that space there. Just getting that glass sort of worked in. Hmm? Flooded on the street. Flooded, flooded? Yeah, I mean, like the street's, it's, it's cresting the street full of water. Is it near the house? No. Okay. I mean, it's like, it's just, you know, lots of water falling from the sky. Okay. I mean, just these days, you got to check that stuff. Like, how close to the house are we? If I took pictures and posted this, some people in some areas would be like, oh my God, what's going wrong with the world? But like in 10 minutes, it's going to be fine. Yeah, we have good, uh, we have good bios in our area. And here at my mom's house. We're okay, don't worry. I'm gonna add a little bit of that white there. We're gonna come back with some black later, but we wanna kinda just get that beginning in. I might get a little more brown. And bring a little brown across from the far left side using the edge of my brush and just brushing it over. Let's bring your brush to the edge, bring a little bit up there. So you can see we are just filling this up. And we'll come and put back some highlights in the little reflective part of the glass. All right. Come underneath here. This is with my black and brown on the corner of my brush. Just making sure that little hidden foot is sort of talked about there. <laughs> There we go. And you can always kind of come in with your background color and trim anything out that you want to. There we go. Let's get it that far in. 
When we come back, we're going to add the next layer, but we do want to dry it this time. Okay, so yeah, we'll get this one dry, and then we'll come to the next step. I've been tending the weather here, looking out the out the windows and the doors, making sure that uh, we're not going to. Uh, need to do anything drastic, which I don't think we are. It looks like it's just regular old, you know, crazy Houston weather. Breathe in, breathe out, relax your neck and shoulders, pay attention to how your body's feeling. Are you okay? Listen to your body. Do you have pain? You might need to shift. If you need to stand up, make sure you stand up. Um, you don't want to sit for huge long periods of time, which you can really fall into when you're painting. Um, I certainly do, but it can be important to stand up in the middle of your painting session. Okay, so I want to kind of trim this up here. I'm going to go ahead and get some of my background color. Pull a little bit down in there. Pulling in the top and kind of implying their shape at the beginning. Not perfectly yet. We don't have to worry about that too much. We just kind of want to get that in. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse this out and I'm going to come back and I'm going to get a small round brush. Uh, no, don't need that. Um, this is a, let's put my glasses on. <laughs> Woohoo, everything is visible now. This is the number six Raphael. I really like this brush. And we're going to start painting in some more of our glass details. So I'm going to come here and now in my lilacs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and my quinacridone magenta and white. I'm going to come here and make little marks that are kind of loose and, well, really messy. See how we're doing? Get a lot of white on there. Just a little bit in that glass. Maybe a little more blue here. Just loosely working it through the glass. Once you've done this one time, what you should be able to do is get your own lilacs and maybe put them in water. You gotta get some background color here because we actually have a water line. that we for sure, for sure want to think about. I can come into my green. Might get a little yellow into it. Down here, kind of softly brush that in. I haven't really rinsed the brush out. And I'm gonna kind of work some of this green up here amongst the purple. See how I'm weaving it in, kind of blending that all in. Now I'm going to loosely put some of my darker color purple in, which is my quinacridone magenta, my ultramarine blue. Okay. Come around maybe that little stem there and deepen that out. Deepen that little value out. I'm going to make a little vertical right here. 
on the right hand side. I'm not going to rinse my brush, but I am going to wipe it off. And I'm going to leave some much lighter little kind of florally marks. See how we're doing? Loading it up with a little more white. It's not pure white, right? It's still got some of the lilac in it, but for the background compared to everything else. I'll bring a little bit of a reflection kind of coming across there. A little more white. Little marks that kind of imply what I'm doing when I push down and I pull back like this. See, I'm pushing down and I'm pulling back like that. I'm implying that those are flowers. Come here at the bottom and bring up a little reflection like that. That's a good reflection, isn't it? Much more in the white with this one. Another little very brighter reflection. A vertical white. And then very lightly on the toe of the brush kind of coming across here. I'm going to imply that this is sort of Maybe water in the glass, right? It's not everything yet. A little yellow green. Rinse out a bit. I'm going to come in and do some dark. I'm going to do some brown and Mars black. Across here, like a nice little little outward kind of triangle shape there. Get some white in here, and that's going to make a little gray. Out here, a little bit of my gray. Sometimes I will rinse my brush out if it's too loaded. A little reflection on that inner. Right here, I might even get a little yellow into it. I 
a little bit of a light coming kind of off the glass. A little yellow and white. Maybe this yellow and white. Put it there. Put it here and let's give it a dry and look at it and then put like the last touches of reflections and highlights and things on there, sort of pull it all together, okay? Sounds good. And I wanted to say thank you to everybody out there who have been making comments and support of my um, weird back stuff. I appreciate it, I really do. Um, it's a strange thing to be experiencing and I appreciate the support for that. So will continue on. Thank you. I'm going to sip my coffee and enjoy that for a second. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a hand by using a filbert. This is a number four filbert. I'll just give me a crisper edge. Did you give me a step, babe? Okay. And I'm going to come in with some background color. Going to round out here and add a little bit of a light reflection coming out there. Some little wiggles. I'll be putting a shadow in later, but that'll that'll give me some forgiveness in the whole thing. I'm adding a little inner light there. Can always come back with my brown and white. Getting those little pops in. Like that right there, just pulling up those reflections. Kind of in that dark footed there. You have a dark footed area, so you want to kind of <laughs> little brown and black. I'm just kind of working those little shadows, right? come across notice the paints kind of like almost thin right so it's not really thickly applied I can come back with a little brown and black. See how we're just getting that nice little shadow going off mm -hmm. to that center. Come underneath the foot, touch out a little bit of an accent shadow right there. It's 
a little bit darker right there. But I really like the green, so I'm going to come back into it. A little dark green there. A little more yellow and white into that. Get some white. I don't want any one on my brush. I'm going to come load the edge. Really strong white on there. <laughs> Come across the top of that glass with a little bit of that. Get those footed areas sort of really lit up. A little touch of a reflection right there between that and the glass. Add a little white to my brown and black. Add some more of the light. Purple. So I'm just touching it on the edge of the brush, just implying what's happening in the glass. All right, now I get to do the funnest part. The flowers. Yay. So you going to dry Which it first? I am going to dry first. I'm going to make sure that I've got nice edges. So if I have to come back with a little bit of the background. You know, definitely do that. But it's fun to paint glass. And this is why. You just, just have an enjoyable time painting glass. Let's dry it and come back and paint a whole heck of a lot of flowers. Yeah. The flowers are going to be the fun part. Now that we have our... our little basey jarry glassy thing that has all of the reflections already painted in it for the stick and the flowers that aren't yet there we can then paint in the stick and the flowers and the rest of the stuff just got to get the layers in <laughs> hmm. so there we go yay you all done yes we have give you a new step the new step, step nine it really is almost done i'll take my background brush because it's pretty big and i'm going to mix a little of my ultramarine blue into my quinacridone magenta and make a purple it's a little more blue than anything and i might even get a little burnt sienna into it I'm going to come on the corner. See how I'm working the corner of the brush? Now I 
I know I've got some flowers that'll come over here, and so I'm going to touch the corner. That's a that's a nice bloom heading over that way. Maybe put a little bit there. Now I lift and do down on this one just so that some of the background really is showing through here. Coming on that corner. Getting a little of that brown into that purple and you can see that just really deepens it. It's by no means the deepest color that we're going to have. It's just... Crystal says, I have to tell you, you're amazing. Well, Crystal, I have to tell you, you're amazing. You guys are incredible. As we keep going here, and we're just going to scuffle this out. And just scuffle it out. Now, if flowers are giving you grief in life, you're like, I love painting flowers, but they're just not coming out how I want. Uh, we have a whole acrylic April that was just for flowers. I'm going a little more into the magenta on that mix. And I'm just, it's just the corner of the brush. Just gives us a starting place, right? It is easy to overdo, so I'm going to rinse that out. Put that to the side, and then I'm going to get my little one that I was doing all this little fussy work in there. Dry this first, come back in step 10. Yes. Just to do, Now that comes the little fussy work, because this makes the details on those sort of flowers come into focus. I don't think it will take. And you're ready for your 10th I step. am. I'm super ready for my 10th. Are you ready for your 10, there guys? All right, so we have our cad yellow over to our green and brown. All right, so we've got that nice little mix. And we know we can add white to it. I'm going to come right here on the more left-hand side, and I'm going to add little peaks of green. Maybe up here in the middle. Put some right here between those two branches. Another little kiss. A little more brown and green, maybe on some of the darker ones. So it's a little darker down there. Let's come off the edge there with a little bit of that green, okay? That one has almost like a little more pop of yellow in it. There we go. Kissing that little green off the edge there. Rinse that out. Now I might get a little bit of my burnt sienna and my docks purple. And I'm going to do this instead of uh, black in here. Because these are lilacs. And even in their darkest shadows, I would want them to... I might avoid the black. So we want that dark value. Come right there and tip that in. 
right? We're creating the depth for which, you know, our flowers really come to stand out. One of the things that we want to do as artists is make sure that even in a light, light painting like this, we have spots of depth. So that's the dark's purple and the burnt sienna. And you'll see that it does give us a nice shadow, but that still feels very organic and botanical. I know we're going to just make this right, like, like fingers crossed. We're getting there, guys. <laughs> it's really going, so we're going to get to the end of this. Okay, so I'm taking my quinacridone and my ultramarine blue, and I'm definitely going more into the blue. And I'm going to add a lot of white. Woo, I can hear the storm. And I'm going to add that to the tip out there. You see how I did? Just very light touches. Light touches. Pray we don't float away. We're going to make it, babe. Okay. You seem a little flustered. And notice that I am touching the brush up and down, but I'm not closing up all of what I see here. Right? I don't close up all of what I see here. I leave things that are underneath it. I can even come and get some white into that, which will give me a surprising into the burnt sienna in the docks purple. So you get surprising results when you do like that because it'll like neutralize it out a bit. Just getting those little. <laughs> That's the burnt sienna in the docks there. We're Sherpa. Thank you for coming to today's live. Who knew it was going to be danger live? <laughs> we're going to float. We're going to get this painting done before we float away. <laughs> That's what we're doing. <laughs> it's the new world for us, guys. We just paint before we float away. I am. Notice how I'm touching the toe of this brush to the canvas and I'm wiggling it around. And I'm just capturing the expression of it, but I'm not trying to get every flower. I'll get a little more brown on there. But you can see with the white that it just kind of, it's there, but it's not so there, there. It's not as much there, there. Now I'm going to come back into my quinacridone and my ultramarine blue. Kind of broke that up a bit. I like to break it up. If you feel like any place is missing green, don't even rinse out. Just come back and be like, hey, do you need some green there? See how I just did? Just blending that in. That's, that's the power of it, right? We just go and go and go. Okay, we're going to come in here. Add those little very light, right? It's not pure white, but they're very light. Look at that little, little, this is like light caught a flower. That's what you're talking about here. That's what he was talking about here. Is that there was some light and it was catching the flowers. there another little sprig sort of popping up he did a whole series of these so if you enjoyed today you can go back through 
um, the paintings that he's, he's done and use these techniques and paint a whole series. Once you've done this one, you can do them all. Are you guys uh, still in Texas? So we are still in Texas pre-Ireland. This is our pre-Ireland location. Ireland yes. will be soon. We just got a... Paperworks. We got paperworks. And then, you know, at this point, we're running up on acrylic April. Well, the, and then we have the event. So it's going to be a little bit of a juggle juggle. Juggle juggle. <coughs> So yeah, we just touch those out and that just starts building those flowers, doesn't it? Starts telling you a flower story. You didn't even know it was there and yet there it is. Then you went more into the blue there. That's a very powerful thing to do, go more into that blue. Adding a little bit of light to that flower. Might grab a little of my yellow and my, just to see how we're doing. Doesn't that just, just show you where it is without beating you over the head with it? <laughs> I love that about this. We're really kind of getting to the end of it, like we're getting there. Add a little white and yellow there, I like that. Just pulling that out because they're a little lighter over here. Light touch. It's a light touch. You know, never underestimate your light touch. There we go. Capture a little bit there. A little bit in the interior, just, just some light. Goodness gracious. We're there, guys. Wow, this just came together. Just comes together, and it's just a delight. Um, I highly recommend taking time out of your week. Let me give this a little signature. Um, in your painting practice, in your painting, to look at your favorite paintings from, you know, the museum that are over, you know, 100 years old and reproduce them because you're going to learn a lot. It's like taking a class from the artist, mm. even though they're long gone from us, even though we can't talk to them, they have left breadcrumbs for us. Uh, where we can look at uh, Remington or we can look at a Manet or Monet and go, how did you handle light? How did you handle texture and color? And from that, become more resolved and whole artists ourselves. And it's just honestly really enjoyable. We call them masters because, well, they had a mastery over their craft mm -hmm. and the things that they created really speak to us it's good for you i think it's good for your mind and soul to paint these things 
I really appreciated everybody being here today. I'm so happy with this came out. I cannot wait to see yours in group. You know, we have the Facebook group. It's a closed group on uh, on Facebook. That's redundant. But it's there. It's the Art Trip Official. Uh, you, uh, I also have a page. You can tag me in. Um, we're on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I don't know why, but I am. Uh, I'm not really on Twitter, but I do try to check it every once in a while just in case somebody is still there sharing art. Um, I'm just letting it get less extra right now. Um, so Instagram is really good. And even Pinterest. So there's a lot of places to share with me. Um, if you thought this was fun and you want to learn watercolor, we're doing watercolor classes. So you can check that out as well over on uh, Watercolor with the Art Sherpa. Uh, that's a second channel. Um, that was in the text today that went out. Be sure to go by the website and sign up for an account so you can be in on the newsletter. Because um, there's big stuff coming, right? Guys, I can't wait to see yours. Yeah. Uh, stay dry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In today's... <laughs> we'll update. I'm sure we're fine. We'll update you, though, and let you know that we are. I'm sure I'm sure it'll all be drained away in a couple hours. It's already starting to. Is it already starting yeah. to? Yeah. Okay. We're going to be good. So I want you guys to be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I'll see you at a easel really soon. Bye-bye.